Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What is happening fifth grade? Welcome to the Math FSA Boot Camp Series and this is video number 18. So I'm hoping that you have your worksheet that you need for today because now is the time for you to pause the video and throw down your best. If you're saying, but Miss McCarthy, I didn't know that there was a worksheet that went along with this video. Well, somewhere down below or around this video, you should see a link that you can click. It'll take you to my website where you can download the worksheet that you need for this episode along with the other episodes in the fifth grade FSA boot camp series. That's a cool dance move, huh? Who said no? <laughs> Just so you know, this is a two part question today. So it's actually one question with two parts. So technically two questions, but it's a two parter. Go ahead and throw down your best and come on back to check your work when you are ready. All right, fifth grade, welcome back. So it says this question has two parts. Nine snakes were measured at a local zoo. Okay, I'm gonna slide this up just a little bit. So we've got two parts. We've got a part A and a part B. Let's go ahead and identify the question types here. So for part A, we see four answer choices. So what kind of question is this one gonna be? A multiple choice. Awesome, jot that down if you did not already. And down here we have one, two grids. This is a gridded response. Super duper fun coming our way. Okay, let's come on back. So we also have a line plot right there. We're seeing that nine snakes were measured at a local zoo. That makes sense because each X represents a snake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm putting an X there because each X represents a snake. And this says length in feet. The question for part A says, what is the total length of the three shortest snakes. Okay, so here we're seeing length right there. So for total, we know that we're joining these three snakes together. We need to find the three shortest snakes. So here is the length. I'm seeing five, six, and seven, and each of those represents the number of feet. So if we're looking for the three shortest snakes, we need to go all the way back here, and this would be one, two, and three. Those would be the three shortest snakes that they have. Even though these two are the same length, they are still part of the three shortest snakes that we have. So how much is each of these worth? Because I see five as a whole number and I see six as a whole number. So that must mean that these are fractional parts in between. So in order to figure out what the fraction is, I can count the number of jumps to figure out what my denominator is. So between five and six, I have, starting at the five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight jumps. 
that means that the denominator for these would be eighths. So this would be five and one eighth, and these would be five and one two three eighths. That means in total we have five and one eighth plus five and, oops, plus five. <laughs> started writing a fraction. That's why you should use pencil and not a pen like me. It just shows up better on camera. Plus five and three eighths. When we join those three shortest snakes together, we will indeed get the total. Since our denominators match, we can go ahead and add them up. Start with our whole number. So we have five plus five, which is 10 and 10 plus five, which is 15. Now we can use addition in the numerator. Yeah, man. So 1 plus 3 is 4, and 4 plus 3 is 7. Oh, I think I see it right there. And our denominator slides across. So 15 and 7 eighths is the correct answer. So which choice is that? C. All right, make any adjustments that you need to make and then join me for the second one. Not number two, but part two. This says two more snakes were brought to the zoo. So now there's a total of 11 because there were nine and now there's two more were brought to the zoo. Now the combined length, that means all of them joined together of all the snakes is 62 feet. Whoa. What are two possible lengths of the new snakes in feet? Whew, we are gonna need a piece of paper for this one. So we know that now all joined equals 62 feet. Okay, so let's go back to this one. So this line plot represents the nine snakes. We have to find the combined total of all the nine snakes and then subtract it from the joined amount when we add in the two new snakes. So the cool thing is we've already done the first three. We've already joined the first three together. So we can go ahead and add up the next ones. So let's figure out what these fractions would be. So we know that they're all gonna be in eighths. So this would be three. This one is three eighths. This would be four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths. And here we have six and two eighths, six and four eighths. All right, so let's add them up. We have these three. So we have 15 and seven eighths. That's the three shortest. Now let's add the other ones in there. Plus five and six eighths. Plus three five and seven eighths. Plus six and two eighths. Plus four eighths. Okay, oh, sorry, six and four eighths. All right, so that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are the nine snakes. Let's figure out how much those nine snakes are joined together, and then we'll figure out how far we've got to go to get to 62 feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and add up all the whole numbers and then the fractions, and it's gonna look a little weird, but we'll fix it, okay? So we have 15, if we add this, we've got 20, plus five would be 25, plus five would be 30, plus five would be 35, plus six would be 41, plus six would be 47. So our whole number right now would be 47. And now let's add up our fractions. Seven plus six is 13. 13 plus seven is 20. 20 plus seven is 27, 27 plus seven is 34, 34 plus two is 36 in our numerator and 36 plus four is 40. All right, so we have 47 and 40 eighths. And I know that 40 divide, this also means divided by, I know that 40 divided by eight equals what? Five holes, so really this turns into 47 plus five, which is 52. That's with the nine snakes. But we know two more came in. So plus two amounts would get us to 62 feet. So really, how much needs to go in right here? Yeah, 10 feet. So now there's 10 feet missing. That means it could be five feet plus five feet even. Now I'm not gonna leave it that simple, but if you were to put that right here, 
that snake number one was five and snake number two was five, you would be correct. Usually though, you're gonna be stuck with some kind of fractional value. So I wanna make sure that I include that. Let's say that the two different ones that you got were four and a half plus five and a half. That would get you 10 as well. But we can't put mixed numbers in there. So what we need to do is convert them to a fraction greater than one. Again, if you were to put five and five to equal the 10 feet that you need, that's fine. I'm just trying to take this up a little bit in case on the FSA you're left with fractions because I want to show you how to convert them into fractions greater than one. To do that, we're going to multiply, then add swoop. So two times four is eight and eight plus one is nine. So we'll bubble in nine halves for one. Multiply, then add swoop. Two times five is 10 plus one is 11 halves. So those are the two answers that I'm going to put in. Whatever you chose, as long as your two new snake amounts <laughs> add up to 10, you're correct. Just make sure if you got a fractional amount that you're leaving it as a fraction greater than one because you cannot put mixed numbers into these gridded responses. They have to be either whole numbers or fractions that are greater than one, not mixed numbers. So I'm going to put nine halves and 11 halves, just like that. Now your teacher might like for you to start right here and do like two slash nine, that's fine. Either way will be fine. Just make sure that you also bubble it in and also make sure that you're not putting it randomly in the middle. You don't want it to be like nine slash two, because that doesn't make sense. The computer won't know how to read that. Do, 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 11 halves, just like that. All right, so as, again, as long as your two choices, they added up to 10, you'd be okay. Because nine plus 11 would be 20, and 20 divided by our denominator of two would be 10. So that makes sense for mine. All right, that was fun today. <laughs> um, I do wanna send you in the direction of some more videos though. So now is the time when I get to send you in the direction of some more helpful videos. So I want you to take a look at the link for McCarthy Math 155 below. You wanna make sure that you grab your seven day free trial. This is a membership, but you can totally check out everything for free for seven days. So if you're interested, check it out. It's really simple to sign up. And if you have any questions, you can email me. But I want you to check out Unit 8. I believe there are seven videos there just on line plots. I know that line plots can be something that students really struggle with. So I wanted to make sure that I included an entire unit on that in McCarthy Math 155. So you should totally check that out. So many schools and even districts are using McCarthy Math 155 as their daily math intervention with students. So if you are interested in that, please reach out to me. I'd love to help you out. The next link that I want to point out is to my How to Pass the Math FSA series. Now this was a series I created several years ago back when the FSA was actually a computer-based test. It's not anymore. It's a paper and pencil test or a paper-based test, which is what we're working on in the Math FSA Boot Camp series. But still, you should totally check out the How to Pass the Math FSA series. It's standards-based. Just some of the questions might look a little different. You'll be like, oh, that was meant for a computer-based test. So just know that, but definitely check it out. I'd love for you to follow me on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. And I'm also on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. If you're watching this from YouTube, could you go ahead and smash that like button for me, not just for me and to make me feel good, but actually for my mission. You see, I'm on a mission to make math fun, make it click and make it stick for as many third, fourth and fifth graders as I possibly can. I know that students struggle with math and I wanna be there for them to help as many students as I possibly can. So when you smash that like button, just know that you are probably changing a whole bunch of students' lives. And that feels pretty cool. Thanks. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And finally, before we go, I just want you to know that you were created for a reason. That's right. You are the ones that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers ready to step it up and make this world a better place, which is pretty awesome if you ask me. When you have the choice, choose kindness and you always have that choice. And I cannot wait to see you all on the next episode.